as it turns out, you don't have to be 65 years old to enjoy a drive in a nice Cadillac. Hey. Today I'll be reviewing a 2019 Cadillac XTS. I rented a car to drive from San Francisco all the way down to San Diego, and when you give me a Chevy Impala, I'll always upgrade. This is the softest and smoothest way to get yourself the 350 some odd miles down the Pacific Coast Highway. In a previous video, I drove the coast in a Hyundai Accent, so this is a much needed upgrade. I don't normally care about Cadillac, especially any model without a V after it, but this was a great companion to have along this seven day journey. The Cadillac brand dates all the way back to 1902, and 117 years later, I think you could say it's well past its prime. When I think of Cadillac today, I just keep seeing the XLR, which I thought was a great looking car at the time, and actually looks really good in these photos, but I saw one recently, and it just doesn't hold up. Their designs are so Cadillac of today, but nothing monumental like in the past. This 1972 Cadillac Coupe de Ville is what I think when I think Caddy. With an 8.2 liter V8, and at 19 feet long, it just makes you ask the cliche question of how many bodies can you fit in the trunk? Today we get 7 foot long taillights and a box shape that's hard to get on board with at first. In this case, my primary goal was to have a car that wouldn't detract from my journey down the coast. Much like other cars I shoot away in the past, I was happily wrong about this one as well. I think my new saying is going to be, don't knock it till you drive it. Unless you're talking about a Saturn. I was right about that one the whole time. The most notable thing about this car is how quiet it is. Because once you roll up this window, you just can't hear anything. It's brilliant. And then you floor because it's a rental. The 3.6 liter V6 engine in this, you really don't hear it vibrate through the cabin that much. It's actually pretty silent throughout the entire rev band. As much as this car isn't about performance, the performance that it does have with 304 horsepower and an amount of torque I'm unaware of, uh, it, the power isn't exactly good. The transmission is probably your weakest link since it's always fumbling around, it seems, when you try to be heavy under throttle. A couple of times I actually got a little bit of a jerky motion in automatic mode. Uh, and in manual mode, you can trigger that relatively easily. But when you're just kind of lazing along, which you're supposed to do with a car like this, you put it in drive, you get to your mile an hour, and you relax at that speed. It's not a poor amount of speed. You're working with a 4,000 pound car and 300 horsepower at the crank. So once that translates to the wheels, it's probably not enough power to really make this thing fun. That's not why you're driving it though, and I totally understand that. Once I get out of my childhood ways of wanting a car that's just gonna go fast, I can take this and I can really accept this car for what it is. A really nice, luxurious ride, especially when you have this kind of view around you. And this car really helps you take it all in. You can't hear a sound that's coming from the outside. And that's probably the one thing you're really opting for when you get a Cadillac, is just that overall quietness that you get from the car. When I looked at the padding, used on the inside of this car, it's clear as day as to why it's so silent and what car manufacturers have to do to get a car to be that silent. Cadillac did that very well. The handling of this car, the suspension is set up more for a floaty ride on the highway, which does equate to more body roll around corners. So I went up a few mountainous roads and I immediately knew that this was not the right car to be driving. It did feel a little boaty, a lot of swaying around some of the tight corners, which in the initial part of the drive was a little bit dodgy since there are really a lot more curves. So it was a little sketchy on some areas. You wanna get brave with the speed because it's fun carving up the mountain, but then you realize immediately this is not the car you wanna do it in. When I rented the Hyundai Accent to do this drive first and I really thought it was the worst possible car, those mountain roads ended up being some of the funnest roads I've ever driven in my entire life. When I brought this car on some of those same mountain roads, I was immediately terrified. The car was way too big for the road I was driving. And in most cases, those are one lane roads with a lot of blind corners. So when a pickup truck comes around a corner, you go, oh, I'm too big. I really never cared for the looks or the designs of a lot of Cadillacs, but I was walking up to this a few times and I was actually like, you know what, that ain't a bad looking car. They have such an angled style to their look. I kind of appreciate it more so now after driving it for about seven days. This is a really a pleasure to be stuck in. Uh, it's comfortable the way your arms sit from the center console to the driver's seat, and it's visually appealing. Uh, I do 
like the design, even though I don't like the materials used for the design. Some of the interior that I don't care for is mainly the center plastic that they've used. It is so not scratch resistant. The, the amount that you can scratch this up just by putting your dirty little mitts on it is incredible. And these plastic buttons here, I, I don't know what these little metal buttons are, but I can't tell like exactly how to use the volume. Like this is kind of it, but it's not. You gotta kind of use above it, but below it. There's no clear way on how you're supposed to use the buttons. And everything I do is usually an accident of what I meant to do. I found this out accidentally, which I imagine every owner has. You kind of graze this and then that happens. And uh, in most cases, I couldn't just have it close again. So if I keep touching this, I'm not, I'm not, playing, I'm not playing around. So come on. There you go. And then it just starts closing. That's going to break eventually, and then you'll never get your heads-up display back. Something as simple as the glove box is a touch-sensitive button, which I think is extremely stupid. A couple of times I've accidentally grazed my finger over it and glove boxed it up a couple of times. But the actual contour is actually really pretty. It works really well with this fake wood that's been etched in some of the areas here. I like it. It's, it's not tacky in a Cadillac, kind of, in a weird Cadillac way. This car has uh, taken me through some of the coolest roads down the coast, from Napa Valley to Monterey, San Simeon, now going down to Santa Barbara, and then further down to LA and then San Diego. Uh, and this was definitely a, a good car to uh, enjoy the drive in. All in all, I can say it was a worthwhile uh, rental. And uh, I get it if people purchase this, it makes sense actually does make sense. When I say I could see why someone would purchase this, I certainly don't mean new. At an asking price of $46,000, you'll see that value swiftly cut itself in half after two years. Some of the older models can be nabbed for ten dollars to $15,000, which seems like a good deal for a ride like this. As far as longevity, I'd be a bit concerned, since something as simple as the center display did conk out on me after a few days into my drive. It ended up clearing itself by doing what looked like a full reboot. The car was virtually brand new, so hopefully a software update would resolve that. I highly recommend a drive down the coast regardless of the car you end up in. It's a beautiful drive that doesn't get old. Check out my previous coastal adventure if you like this one. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. If there's a person who's older than 65 and they're driving this and they're already hard of hearing, why must you make the car so quiet? They won't know anyway.